Welcome to the City of Marshalltown City Council Chambers for our meeting on January, I'm sorry, on June 18, 2018. Got snow on my mind. Uh, you know, I'm reading the wrong agenda. June 25, we'll get it right eventually. I am oriented to place, not sure about anything else. Um, so June 25 at 5.30 p.m. at the uh, 10 West State Street address and here is a notice to public. Uh, the mayor and council welcomes comment from the public during discussion of any of the agenda items. Step to the microphone, state your name and address for the record, and talk for only three minutes to let others be able to speak as well. Please speak <coughs> clearly and direct your comments to the mayor and city council, not to any council members specifically. It's up to the discretion of the mayor and council to respond to specific questions or comments or to have staff respond during the meeting. Uh, since we've been called to order, let's all rise who can and uh, join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's a good thing I don't have to talk for a living. Uh, would you call the roll, please? Hoop. Here. Isom. Here. Lamer. Here. Martin. Here. Warren. Here. Cahill. Here. Gowdy. Here. Good. Are there any comments by the counselors or city administrator before we begin? I do have um, a couple of comments, Your Honor. I was fortunate to be able to attend the um, police and fire building tour last week and wanted to thank the um, engineer from or the project manager from Story um, Construction as well as Justin from the city engineer and Chief Tupper, Tupper for answering all of my questions as we walked along. It is an incredible sight to see how it's moving along and it's starting to take shape that you can really visualize who's going to be where and what um, where the dogs are going to go in and the seven bays for the um, apparatus for the fire department and we couldn't get completely into the fire department area they were working but it is an incredible structure and uh, I was told that at this point they are on time and uh, within budgetary limits so those were good things to hear as well thank you that is good news I hadn't heard that we were on schedule uh, still under budget as I understand as well any other comments your Honor, so I took a tour today, not of the police and fire building, but the Willows, and I would highly recommend it. My husband's parents are in town from California, and they're always interested in exploring facilities like that, so, um, so we went over there today. And I found out they have a tour every Wednesday afternoon at 5 o'clock for the public, so... Um, so that's available. I would highly recommend it. It was wonderful. It's beautiful. It is. Thank you. Anyone else? I had one other comment as well. Yeah. Um, I was doing my news one morning last week and saw an article in the New York Times, the online version, that featured a doctor from Marshalltown, Iowa. And it is um, a Dr. Gastala, Nicole Gastala at Primary Health, who works with um, people who are afflicted with the opioid um, addiction. And even though it was a, an article that, that is treating a very deadly and a very serious illness, I was just honored that we have someone in our community because it takes special training and, and not every doctor can prescribe the medications they're using. So it takes a real dedication of the staff at Primary Health as well as Dr. Gustala to go to the extra effort and the extra hoops they have to go through to help treat those who are addicted um, to opioids. And so it even though it is a terrible disease, I am very happy that we have services in Marshalltown to help those who are afflicted with it. Very, it put Marshalltown in a good light, I felt. It did. It's an excellent article. It said she had to teach herself, too. Yes. There really wasn't any training for her. And so they're looking at her as kind of being the flagship for how this can be done. On Friday, uh, 
Senator Ernst's top staffer dropped, <coughs> dropped in the office and told me that is her main concern, so I forwarded to her and to him that article. The Washington Post also had an article that was published today or yesterday that put Marshalltown in a favorable light. One of our employers has uh, hired a special needs employee, mm -hmm. and the whole article was about how the un unemployment rate has gotten so low that it's getting tough to find people, and that's a nice solution is to, to hire a special needs person. So if you look up the Washington Post in Marshalltown, Google that, I think you'll see that story as well. Anyone else have any comments? I've got some good news to share if we're done. Our, our younger daughter got engaged, <laughs> and we love the kid. <laughs> so, yeah, there's some hope of having grandchildren. Get your checkbook out. <laughs> Did, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, let's go on to uh, business then. Item E, urban renewal area, amendment number seven. Um, That's the wrong agenda. Oh, wrong agenda. <laughs> yeah, just take it away, <laughs> away from me. Don't let me see that again. <laughs> Okay, consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So move, Your Honor. Second. All those, uh, roll call, please. Isom? Yes. Lamer? Yes. Martin? Yes. Weirin? Yes. Cahill? Yes. Gowdy? Yes. Hoop? Yes. Thank you. Carried. Madam Clerk, will you read the items? Approved council minutes of June 11 and June 18. Approved bill list in the amount of $907,820.59. Received the civil service list for a police officer, records clerk, and sewer maintenance worker one. Approved May financial statements. Resolution accepting and awarding the bid for providing salt for ice and snow control for the 2018-2019 fiscal year in the amount of $75.07 per ton. Tobacco permit renewals for the year ending June 30, 2019, Seven Rails Liquor Store, Express Smart, Food and Gas Smart, Vons Pub, BW Gas and Convenience Retail. Approve alcohol license renewals, Central Iowa Fair, Air Portal, Jake's Game Room, Get and Go Convenience Stores, number 35 and number 34, and Applebee's. Thank you. Uh, let's go on to reports. Uh, Alliant Energy 2017 Community Annual Partnership Assessment. And as Amanda is coming to the um, microphone, I can say that I know there's a public meeting tomorrow yep. at the library. And then you're giving me a tour of the facilities on Thursday, I think it is. Friday. Friday? The, well, Sorry. the 13th. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, whatever the 13th is. Oh, it is Friday the 13th. Next, yeah. next week. Okay. Yeah. So my name is Amanda Akla. I'm the key account manager with Alliant Energy that works with the city of Marshalltown. Um, my address is 2504 Knoll Way Drive here in Marshalltown. Each year we present our community annual partnership assessment um, just as a way to kind of show the investment in the community. Uh, this past 2017 we had about $9,775 in economic development efforts that went towards Marshall Economic Development as well as the Chamber of Commerce. For community support, there was just over, just under $18,000. Those are for things like Orpheum Live After Five, Octemberfest, Central Iowa Fair, Police Department Bike Program, and Big Brothers Big Sisters. The Environmental Partnership Program, we had uh, just about $9,000 for things like planting of trees in city parks. For our in energy efficiency impacts, we had just over 1,500 rebates, and that was about 500 $56,000 in the community going back um, anywhere from, that's commercial, industrial, and residential. And that equates to about 400 vehicles off the road, over 2,000 acres of forest, and about 4,000 barrels of oil. We had uh, just about $900,000 in infrastructure investments, 500 of that being natural gas and about 350 being electric. Um, those are projects we did in two hundred or two thousand and seventeen. And then in property taxes, we are two million seven hundred and ninety eight thousand in Marshalltown, and then the county three million five hundred and eighty nine thousand. And we employ about one hundred and eight people from the area, including the generating station. As Mayor Greer mentioned, we have a gas rate review tomorrow. Uh, it's a public meeting held at the Orpheum tomorrow at 11. It's open to anyone to come in and ask questions, make comments. Uh, our executive team will be there as well as members from the Iowa Utilities Board and Consumer Advocates. So it's open to anyone and we invite you to come. Any questions? Questions or comments? 
we, we still miss some of the fine people that were up here while the plant was being yes. built. But uh, yes. what a nice addition to this community. And we've got a gas plant instead of a coal plant. It's, yes. It's Most efficient in the nation. So. <laughs> Super. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Yes. <coughs> Can you tell us what the rate increase you're looking at for tomorrow? Yeah, it depends on the 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 class that you're in. Mm -hmm. um, residential will be about 8% is what they're asking for. Uh, the larger commercial and industrial won't see quite as much of an increase uh, depending on the class, but uh, residential is about 8%. Okay. Thank you. Yep. It, it's my understanding that because of the costs going down, though, the average consumer will be paying less even with the rate increase than was yeah, true. Yeah. Typically, if the cost of fuel stays low or down, um, we pass. that's just a pass-through cost mm -hmm. for Alliance. So if those costs continue to stay steady or decline, that will actually have better impact. Yeah, we, for we don't know that. Yeah, <laughs> true. Any other questions? Thanks for the okay, good report. Thank you. On to item H, resolutions. Uh, would you read the first one, please, Madam Clerk? Resolution approving bid and award to concrete professionals for the construction of the Iowa River Trail Phase 3 project in the amount of $245,337.85. Good evening, Justin Nickel, Public Works Director. Uh, I believe it was on June 5th that we opened bids for the next phase of the Iowa River Trail. This is for concrete uh, pavement from basically the northwest corner of the Summit Street Bridge, uh, stretching out to Radio Tower Road, but does not include the construction of the bridge at Radio Tower Road. Uh, the low bid came from Concrete Professionals of Altoona. Uh, they bid $246,337.86 and the engineer's estimate of probable cause was 323,000, so this was a favorable bid opening. Uh, this project is funded with state funds and uh, funds from Trails Incorporated, so there are no city funds, no um, actual dollars going towards this project. Be happy to answer any questions. How soon can they start? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we're looking probably at uh, more like an August time frame. Uh, Heather, do you remember? I don't know. Okay, yeah, I was going to say, we haven't had a pre-construction conference yet, so uh, we don't know for sure. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. Is there a motion to approve that resolution? I move for approval. I'll second. Any discussion? Public discussion? Roll call, please. Martin. Yes. Warren? Yes. Cahill? Yes. Gowdy? Yes. Scoop? Yes. Isom? Yes. Lamer? Yes. Carried 7 0. Thank you. Uh, please read item resolution, the next resolution. <laughs> resolution approving professional services agreement for the Marshalltown on Demand Traffic Services with HDR Engineering in the amount of $52,390. Again, Justin Nickel, Public Works Director, asking for your approval for an engineering agreement with HDR. Um, uh, I believe it was last month. Uh, we went through the process of uh, asking for proposals and selecting uh, three engineers to provide us traffic engineering services. Um, this specific task for HDR would be to go through and uh, uh, expand our inventory on traffic signals going through and looking at what kind of equipment is on the signal pole what kind of equipment is in the traffic signal cabinet all of the pieces that make the traffic signals work in an effort to have a uh, inventory to look for a funding grant funding from the Iowa DOT HDR and their proposals uh, exemplified for the city how they'd done this in Council Bluffs I know Jessica and I were both very impressed with that process that they'd used. And so it's our hope that we'll see a return on this investment uh, when we apply for grant funds uh, this year, next year, and hopefully continuing throughout many years. Be happy to answer any questions. Your Honor. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> um, are they going to handle the redesign of um, Center Street? For they the are not. Uh, Bolton and Mink was one of the other uh, engineers uh, selected for traffic on demand services, and we're negotiating with Bolton and Mink to get a uh, scope and fee to do that. And they, they would also include the traffic, uh, traffic signal at 6th and high for uh, emergency preemption. Okay. And, and are they going, they're just doing the traffic. Who's doing the street? 
Uh, in our discussions with Bolton and Mink right now, we've talked about not actually moving the traffic signal pole uh, in an effort for cost savings, but to once again put the preemption on that signal so that we could make sure that we cleared out all the traffic and that the fire trucks or our emergency responder vehicles wouldn't actually have to go around. We've looked at it, I looked at it when we talked about this two years ago, and I think we're going to find it very difficult to move the base out to the north or south side of Anson Street. So we're going to look at uh, preemption and, and clearing the traffic out rather than moving the traffic signal pole. Okay. If we do need to come to that, we will, but our first option is going to be Same looking at... Same thing on 6th Street then? 6th uh, Street, yes. Would uh, My intention would be that that would only be a signal that uh, stops north and south traffic if there is an emergency vehicle that needs to come off of High Street onto 6th Street. But once again, we're in the very early phases of looking at that as well. Okay, thanks. Is there a motion to approve the resolution? I so move. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Warren? Yes. Cahill? Yes. Gowdy? Yes. Hoop? Yes. Isom? Yes. Lamer? Yes. Martin? Yes. Thank you, carried. Madam Clerk, please read the next resolution. Resolution accepting bid and authorizing the purchase and installation of a new tower antenna and equipment by Sabre Industries at the new police and fire facility in the amount of $11,937. Uh, Justin Nickel, Public Works Director, um, had some help from our dispatch uh, department, and they don't do this quite as often. I think this is kind of uh, misworded in the resolution. This is really a change order to the bid we've already had for the um, antenna tower. Uh, through work with the dispatch department and with Raycom, they identified about another $12,000 worth of equipment that needs to go onto that monopole. So really, this is uh, a approving a change to the existing bid that Sabre had already provided for us earlier this year. And I'll be happy to try and answer any questions. So Justin, the, the total is more like 24,000? Uh, no, I, I, reading that? I can get you the exact number, but I think the total is more like 135 or 140,000. That's right, that's right. Yeah, you're a little short. Yeah. I'm trying for a bargain. <laughs> Not here. Hope springs eternal. I move Any for other approval, questions? Your Honor. Oh, I move for approval, Your Honor. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Cahill? Yes. Gowdy? Yes. Hoop? Yes. Isom? Yes. Lamer? Yes. Martin? Yes. Weirin? Yes. Carried 7 0. Read the fourth resolution, please. Resolution authorizing a grant application in the amount of $250,000 to the Iowa Department of Transportation State Recreational Trails Program for the Iowa River Trail Lynn Creek Trail Connector. This is a, a project for which you had approved funding for engineering um, back in the month of April, early April. Uh, Bolton and Mink is the uh, engineering firm that is working on this project. And as we started you know, having discussions, we realized that the state rec trail grant application deadline of July 1st was coming up very quickly. And so I remained in communication with them to determine whether or not we would even have a, a concept to be able to apply for some grant funds for this, this trail. Um, so Bolton and Mink had applied some initial concepts, which uh, the, the one that has been selected to include in the application and for the purpose of providing that total cost estimate of $789,000, a little bit over that, um, was one that has uh, the trail on property of which we have been in contact with uh, the Legion and others. So keeping it in an area where we were not trying to put a, a trail on property where we did not have sort of acceptance of, of that concept, which I know was a concern of some of you as we talked about approving the engineering. And so everything is still very, very much conceptual um, at this point. Um, of the $789,000 estimated cost at this point, uh, $425,500 of that is related to the bridge. Um, because this is still very much conceptual, um, there is, there's uh, been a question raised by Bolton and Mink as to whether it's 
cheaper to buy a precast bridge, um, trail bridge, and just set it in place next to the existing um, bridge at, uh, that went over Lane Creek at 6th Street or to actually do a rehab of the existing bridge. And so that question still has not been answered, but ultimately that does not need to be answered um, to apply for a $250,000 grant um, from the Iowa DOT uh, state rec trail funds. Um, there is a million dollars that gets awarded statewide. So $250,000 is asking for a lot. Um, it's not asking for the maximum we could, but we felt that there was a need to be reasonable. And so again, there's nothing that commits you to this project by submitting this application. Um, but it is something that if we were to receive these funds would be a, a big um, plus for Marshalltown uh, to receive um, a, a quarter of the funds that would be available for the state for this for this project. Is there a motion to approve the resolution? Just oh, questions are fine. Uh, well, I move for I approval, move. and then we can. I move for approval. Second. But I do I'm have a lost. question too. Discussion. I'm lost. I I. I I never knew we approved to let them design a trail on property that we didn't own. And so they, they have not designed a trail on, on property for which we have not had a conversation about there being acceptable use. So the, the trail design no, that's that, being used what's in that. Conceptual, let, back up. Do we, are they going to be designing a trail on property we don't own? There would be that is correct because okay. we do not own um, the bowling alley and property or the legions property. <coughs> okay, this is about a trail that somebody had a grand idea about to run behind the bowling alley, through that through that wooded mess along the railroad, clear up and tie into the new to the new trail, right? Yes. So um, MHS properties. Uh, they're not. They're not. They're not doing any design work though. What are they doing for us? Bolton and Mink is doing the design, yes. Yeah. Why are we designing it? We haven't even approved it yet. You, you did approve a contract, or you did approve funding for the design. The contract was at a purchasing authority level that did not require it to come back to the council. Okay. Um, and so that was, that was, there's information in the memo that I included in the packet related to that, but that was decided and funds were committed by the council in early April um, for the purposes of hiring an engineer. The actual amount was not to exceed 65,000 at this point um, because we haven't needed to get a, uh, an engineer involved for the bridge specifically. Um, we are under that amount. And so that's where we're, we're still in that very preliminary phase um, we do have Greg with Bolton and Mink here who can probably give you more of a timeline, but you did authorize us to move forward with designing this trail. I don't recall that. And that was in April? It was in April. Mm -hmm. it, it might not have been 7-0, but we did it. I know it was not 7-0. And you took it upon yourself to go ahead and authorize because it was under the, the 65,000, you went ahead and authorized this to go ahead when it wasn't a unanimous vote of the council? The purchasing policy requires- I know what the policy says. I'd ask you a question. Yeah, uh, uh, I had every right within our policy and okay. what you had approved in terms of funding with where this came out that I could move forward with um, putting Bolton and Mink under contract for what the council approved. It, it did not even require a super majority on a vote like that either. Yeah, Your Honor, there's been a motion in a second, I believe. We're still under discussion, I remind you. Yep. And Greg, if you would like yeah. to address it, please go forward. Uh, Greg Broussard with Bolton and Mink. Um, so to give a little bit of background, the State Rail Track, they, it's an annual program that they do. Last year they had a little over a million. This year they're right at a million. Last year the awarded ranges went anywhere from 133,000 <clears throat> excuse me, to 400,000 plus. So 250 is right in about the range of what they've seen awarded for the state rec programs in the past. Um, to answer your question, Leon and Bill, no, we haven't done design. We looked at concept layouts of where the trail can go. We haven't done any design yet. I think design aspect won't, essentially you have to talk to those property owners before you're gonna design a trail through their property. We've looked at what are the options, how do you get from A to B and come up with different costs and how you do that. So that's as far as we've gotten to date um, to be able to get ready to apply for this state rail truck 
uh, grant is where we're at. Do you have any commitments from the property owners of the Legion uh, and or the Teamwork Marshalltown to join in and support some of those costs for any proposed trail extension? Those, those are not conversations that we've had with the owners of those properties. Um, the conversations that we have have been what has been before you as well with them expressing their support for the concept um, and sort of the, the willingness to um, have their properties assist in, in that concept. I've had one of the owners tell me that, that they would allow us to build the trail, but they, if, if I think they're going to pay for any of it, I'm whistling Dixie, so it's all our. They they give us they give us easement, but that's as far as it goes. And I think he was mentioning that the easement might cost a little something too. Your Honor, is this the is this a once a year grant? Yes. They only offer it one time. Yep. Okay. Other questions by the counselors? Uh, just so I, one comment. Um, but do we actually, uh, because we actually own the property that the Legion is actually on, we lease that to the, the American Legion so they don't actually have an input of whether they're having a trail or not because of the, the, the they lease the property from the, from the city. I'm just making a statement I, or asking a question. I, I, what we have tried to do is not go as heavy handed as maybe that statement would be, um, but that we all want to work together. But you are correct. The, the property that is on the, the north side of the golf course is owned by the city and leased to the Legion. And so um, that's where uh, I believe that we'll have cooperation there to, to make improvements um, and that there is a agreement there. But, but you're right, when it comes down to it, that does resolve um, or address sort of one of the owner issues. Uh, second question, did we or did we not, when we, when we passed the, uh, the initial 65,000 uh, to do some engineering work, wasn't that a stipulation also that that we didn't go ahead with that until we had agreement with all the owners? No, the, no. the resolution was just authorizing the use of local option sales tax for that purpose. Um, as, as Greg has said, I apologize that I confused the concept layout um, phase that we're in right now with the, with the design, but that is something, that's a bridge that's going to have to be crossed at some point. It just hasn't happened at, at this time. Okay. Your Honor, um, could we talk about the timing of the grant and if there is a when would we find out about the grant and and what would be the timing to accept the grant um, yeah. and um, and then by when would we have to spend it yep uh, so the first thing grant applications are due July 1st and typically uh, they vary in past years they've taken uh, three to four months to hear back from the DOT on that return period and then you usually are given uh, roughly a month and a half to be able to tell them yay or nay whether you want to accept the grant and then from accepting the grant DOT grants typically last three years through the through the state rail program through the state rec program so that's kind of the the time frame thank you yeah any other consular comments or questions I guess one one more quick thing on the bridge uh, so that number that four hundred twenty five thousand dollars for the bridge what we looked at was um, we know the existing bridge is in need of some repair. Um, we're not the structural engineer who's done those evaluations. So we came at it from a different aspect and said, okay, if you don't want to rehab your existing bridge, how much does a new one cost? Um, we thought it, when we first started, it would be in the 200 to $250,000 range. By the time we got into figuring out how big a span that is to be able to have the abutment sit outside the Army Corps of uh, levy, so that way we don't have to go through Army Corps permitting, that turned into a very large bridge, which is why we got to the 425000 That number, I think, is probably worth now evaluating a little bit more on your existing bridge. How much would that cost to rehab that to bring that up to a safety level that's acceptable for pedestrians? Is that less than 425? I definitely think that's something that's worth evaluating before just going forward with a brand new bridge. So, 
Thank you. Any other consular comments or questions? Only question I have would be around the grant submittal and our conceptual plan. There's nothing that holds us in place with any of the specific details that we submit that grant with. Yes, that's in the conversations I've had with Greg, and he can probably elaborate a little bit more that, um, you know, we're, we're, we're still in the design phase, and that's what we're marking on our application, and so that there is some flexibility for change. I think a recent example would be that Trails Inc. had received a state rec trail grant um, a few years ago, and um, the scope of that has changed in the three years that they've been working to spend that money. Yeah, the, the big thing is that we're showing them we're going to go from point A to point B, and we have a general idea of how we're going to get there, knowing that alignments could change. As you get through design, you work with those property owners, you work with cost to try to maximize the, the use of your funding. That's the, the big thing they want to know is how to get from A to B, and you've got a general concept laid out that you don't have to have all the fine teeth, all the fine details done at this point. Anything else from the council? Public comment. Mark Eaton, 1007 South 10th Avenue. So there's some language in the last paragraph of your resolution being used to elicit this grant from the DOT that says the city of Marshalltown pledges it will adequately maintain the trail for intended use and maintain the Lynn Creek Trail and the Iowa River Trail both for justifying this project and public use for 20 years following the project's completion. In October 28th of 2013, a 28E agreement was signed with Trails Inc. that says that Trails Inc. is the person or organization that is supposed to maintain the Iowa River Trail. So are we invalidating that agreement or are we pledging to take that responsibility from them or are we blowing smoke up the DOT? Just a, a quick response to highlight that. That is one of the requirements that we submit that statement basically as approved by the governing authority, which is you, the city council, um, for there. Ultimately, with the Iowa River Trail, it is on city, city land, city infrastructure. So if Trails Inc. ever dissolves as an organization, we're still responsible for that, just as we are for the Lynn Creek Trail. And so as I looked at that statement that we were required to submit, I did not see anything troubling with that as those are two trails that we, we have the ultimate responsibility to maintain, even if we have delegated that authority to Trails Inc. Um, in the meantime, through another method. Seeing no other public comment, uh, let's call the roll. Gowdy? Yes. Hoop? No. Isom? Yes. Lamer? No. Martin? No. Warren? Yes. Cahill? Yes. Motion carried 4-3. Thank you. Let's go on to item I, ordinances. Would you read the first one, Madam Secretary? Second reading of ordinance 14973, amending chapter 26, streets and sidewalks, article 3, sidewalks by repealing current language and adopting new language. Is there a motion to approve the ordinance? So moved, Your Honor. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. Public discussion? Mark Eaton, 1007 South 10th Avenue. So there's language in the current um, proposed ordinance which violates some language in the DOT chapter 12, 12A2. There's a couple things. One, um, I've mentioned this before, we need to have a transition plan. Two, it says that if a city wishes to pass anything different than what's, than what's in this chapter 12, 12A2, it has to get approval from the DOT or the Federal Highway Commission, Department of Justice. Um, one of the things it mentions is vertical separations equal to three quarters of an inch or more. That's what it says in our proposed code. 
In the DOT section E, it says that changes in level, including bumps, utility castings, expansion joints, et cetera, shall be a maximum of one quarter of an inch without a bevel or a half an inch with a bevel of two to one where the bevel is provided. The entire vertical surface of the discontinuity sh shall be beveled. So we're in violation there. Uh, it also says horizontal separations equal to one inch or more in our code proposed code. In the DOT code, it says horizontal openings shall not allow passage of a half inch sphere. So if you, if you approve this code, you will be in violation of the DOT code. One, one quick mention to make is that I did not make this code up, that this was something that, as I mentioned, um, we're going through a recodification now with American Legal Publishing. And so I visited the codes of other cities that they have worked with, knowing that they were going to be making similar recommendations for our codes. There were three different cities that I found to be consistent in what they provided. And so ultimately, I copied and pasted their text. So any concerns with what I did would be something we could leave this for um, our recodification experts to handle, um, but ultimately seeing the consistency of the language of what is proposed, accepting some of our items that did happen to be items that were unique to our previous sidewalk ordinance or our current sidewalk ordinance, we certainly could leave this for recodification and let our recodification experts make that recommendation, but I'm comfortable recommending to you at this point that what, what I'm proposing is not dissimilar from what, as, what other cities are using currently in the state of Iowa. What are the, <clears throat> excuse me, go ahead. Go. What are the ramifications if we are out of compliance with the DOT um, with their statements? So at, at this point, um, there, there's a really good conversation to have there because uh, this all goes back to the, the need for an ADA transition plan and that requirement being put in place for um, entities back in 1992. The Iowa DOT has not required cities to have um, a, an ADA transition plan in place in order to receive any of their funding or any federal highway funding. And so at this point, I would say that that ramification would be very small. I will remind you all that our ADA transition plan requests for proposals are due tomorrow at 5 p.m. And so we will have hopefully at least two um, proposals that we can review to move forward with that aspect. Um, it was just recently that the DOT had adopted those rules. Um, we can certainly follow up on that. Um, but again, knowing that we're going to be recodifying um, here, our entire ordinances here soon, um, before the end of the calendar year, I think is our, our goal. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Sherry. Um, but that would, be, that would be something that if the DOT would have an issue, um, that we, we would certainly be able to correct that again through the recodification process at the end of the year. But again, I, I would say since other Iowa cities have this language, I don't see it as, a, as something that would put us in any sort of jeopardy at this point. Thank you. Your Honor, how did, um, our attorney, how do you feel about it? Do you feel like we're okay? I don't, I would tend to agree that if there is something that uh, in the recodification of the city code we find should be corrected, we can do it at that time. Okay, thank you. Public comment? Yes, please. My name is Linda Clark. I live at 306 South 2nd Avenue, and I have resided in Marshalltown my entire life. I read the language what you put here. Minimize the liability of the city. I would like this mayor and the council all to realize, and I'm sure most of them do, we have a lot of areas in the city that do not have any current sidewalks at all. We also have areas such where I live. I have the right width. I have the sidewalk bricks that are standard code for the side. When the sidewalk was put in north of mine, it was made smaller, and it doesn't fit. The problem I have with this is where is there a grandfather clause for existing sidewalks here in Marshalltown that we will be grandfathered and not have a problem? If we're having new construction, new sidewalks, then set the code down and stick to that. But what about the sidewalks that we do have? Because I recall 
when it was, and I do still believe it is, the responsibility of the city for the streets, the sidewalks, and the alleys. And Mr. Mayor could correct me or anyone else, but I have a problem with so many of the codes being changed. I expressed 48 hours I felt was reasonable for clearing snow from our sidewalks. And that, I understand, has been changed to 24 hours after the snow stops. The city has a lot of areas that they're responsible to do, <coughs> like painting the curbing for the yellow, no parking. There are a lot of things around. I want to see something grandfathered. I don't want you changing your mind. Give away Nevada Street and then say you want it back. I expressed my concern about vacating that street when that first came up before most of the ones were on the council at that time, but Ms. Kaufmanauer was. She heard me object. So that's all I'd like to say. Any other public comment? Brittany O'Shea, 104 Highland Acres Road. I'm not speaking. I'm just going to grant my three minutes to Mark to speak again. Thank you, Mark Eaton, 1007 South 10th Avenue. So the DOT may not consider the transition plan an issue, but in 2008, Californians for Disability Rights Act versus Caltrans, one of the lawsuit points, which Caltrans lost, was lack of a transition plan constitutes a violation of ADA by itself. Any other public comment? By the way, I let it go this time. I don't think that's probably going to be allowed in the future. I mean, we'd have 10 people come, and it, everybody could give three minutes to Mr. Eaton, and he'd, he'd get to talk for an hour. I don't do the math right. Are, is there any other uh, comment or question from the council? Well, let's call the question. Hoop? No. Isom? Yes. Lamer? No. Martin? No. We're in? Yes. Cahill? Yes. Gowdy? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Would you read item or ordinance number two, two please? Ordinance 14975 providing for the division of taxes levied on taxable property in amendment number seven to the urban renewal plan for Marshalltown Urban Renewal Area number three pursuant to section 403. Point one nine of the Code of Iowa. Second reading. Is there a motion to approve? I move for approval, Your Honor. Second. Discussion? Just, I'll oh, ask I'm one sorry? just, sure, just for can. my clarification again. This is the second reading of what we um, dealt with last week in our special meeting correct yes that's 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 it, correct which is this <coughs> is this is a required step to yes. add area um to urban renewal area number three and that's what we if approved it just adds the area but does not grant any specific rights to any specific businesses correct, correct. those have to be okay. considered separately thank you your honor <clears throat> one question about i received a comment from bob olson i th don't think i'm the only one that wanted his area included too is that possible or is it too late in the process it, it is too late in the process and i did talk to him um a few times this past week and informed him that he could bring forward his plan for improvements to his property and we could have a discussion about whether or not we wanted to go back um, after this was done to restart the process to add more area um, to the urban renewal area okay thanks other questions or comments my comment would be, Your Honor, I'm not opposed necessarily to adding t land, territory, areas to urban renewal. I am opposed to the council making decisions that favor one business over another, and that's the route we're headed for. It sets an awful precedent, and uh, I will oppose it comes up. Again, this gets it's into land value, taxable value. On down the line, it gets into number of jobs created and so on. Um, to me, both go hand in hand and both have consequences. 
positive and negative. I do not want the council to provide for favorites. Other comments? I, I, I understand where you're coming from, Mr. Martin, but when we approved uh, help for Tyson's or for Menards and we have local businesses downtown that furnish those services, I didn't think we were favoring anybody, but I suppose you could look at it that way. Uh, I don't think this would be the first time that we, we did something like that. And I think you're probably right. It would be, it possibly could be. You're right. <coughs> Hearing no other comments or questions, let's call the roll, please. Isom? Yes. Lamer? Yes. Martin? No. Warren? Yes. Cahill? Yes. Gowdy? Yes. Hoop? Yes. You're right. Very good. That carried on to. Item J, which is discussion. <coughs> Good evening, Diana Steiner, Finance Director. Um, before you is our uh, financial report for the Police and Fire Building. So up at the top, um, we have the revenue. <laughs> so we have um, all of our bond funds, 17.9 million. Um, and then we have banked so far $110,000 in interest. Our recent CD rates that we've been getting are around 2.3%. And then you have the expenditures. So the first column is our actual payments out of pocket, and the second column is encumbrances or estimates. So um, today, our bank balance is $11.9 million. If you take the $18 million in revenue and subtract the $6 million in expenses that we've actually had. Um, if you go down to the stormwater improvements for $225,000, that was uh, discussed uh, several meetings ago. And I just want to come back around and make sure that your direction was for us to go ahead and put this in, in this budget and pay for it out of the bond funds. The, the reason we're, we're asking is uh, that I did have a question that the, the bottom line number seemed a little low based on conversations. Um, the stormwater conversation happened in the context of the furniture conversation. And so that's where I wanted to make sure there was no official action for us, but I wanted to make sure that that didn't get lost. We didn't feel like we had enough concrete to say that we should be removing the stormwater improvements from the police and fire budget and paying for those with with um, current stormwater bond funds on hand but if that is the direction that you would like us to to do we would remove the two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars from this budget as it would not be paid for from the bond funds for the building and so if if that's how you would like this represented in the future we would like a motion to um, remove the two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars from this budget I have a comment, if I may. I, I agree that I, I understand where you're going, and I don't have a problem with that, but what I would like to see is I'd like to see us leave it alone because when it comes time to finalize this budget out and finalize out the payment for the fire and police station, I want to see how close we were, and I want to see how close we were with the original numbers, not with some numbers that we've messed around with. So leave it there. Uh, know, know that we're not going to spend it for that, but at the, end of the, at the end of the project, we can take a look and see where we came in, whether we came in under budget, over budget, or what we did. And we, the, the other reason I wanted to leave it in there, because I think when, once they get through with the traffic stuff, you're going to need some more money. And since this has already been approved, we could transfer that to the traffic department or somewhere. But I... I like to see, I like to see us end up when we end up compared to where we started. So and I, okay. moving money out doesn't do that. It, I don't like that. 
So I, I would say we'll, we'll ultimately do that. I mean, there's the, you know, that number is based on an initial estimate that I think Justin can provide a little bit more background with, of, along with, you know, the traffic signal improvements and the median and everything else that we can go back and look at that. It's just more of, uh, I, I guess if you don't, if you don't want to change how it's represented here, are you at least, can, can somebody make a motion saying that you actually do want things paid out of the stormwater bond funds versus here? Because as of now, it's, it's looking like it's coming out of here. And I think that's a clarification that we're looking to resolve at this point. Um, oh, yeah, I mean, we've, we've had engineering costs and other things that have not been applied here. I believe those have come out of the stormwater bond funds at this point. Um, but it would be nice if we had some formal motion or something to say that that was actually how you wanted that done so that that's just not us making a decision as to which funds to use at which point in time. Okay. So you want to, you want a motion to authorize the use of the bond funds to pay the 225,000 that is shown on the um, estimated cost for the police and fire and leave and we'll just leave that number there but we're not going to spend that money is that what you're asking for i would say to simplify it a, a motion to have stormwater improvements for the police and fire building paid for from stormwater bond funds rather than the building bond so funds. moved Second. So, I'm I'm a bit confused on on what we're talking about here. If we leave it in here, then we would pay for the stormwater improvements from the fire and police building budget. No. That's that's what I'm trying to. Clarify. I know. I know, and I am confused <laughs> on the discussion that that Councillor Lamer shared has confused me further I, th I thought i understood which way we were going um, so we need to decide whether we want to pay the funds out of the stormwater bonds that's what, fund. We just, that's what the motion is to do. so if the motion is that then it would take it off of this fund mm -hmm. which you indicated you did not want to do no, if i understood correctly it's going to leave that two hundred twenty-five thousand showing up there but we're not going to spend it it's it, just going to show but why would it show up there if we're taking it out of a different fund wouldn't it, we have to transfer it to the other be, fund because so at the end of the project we want to see we we this is this is the budget we put together for the fund when we went to the public and said we need this much money and right. this is what we're going to spend it for when we're all done we can have we can just show the comparison and say look at here's where we're at and we ended up like here i understand that but it would seem to me that then we should pay for it the stormwater improvements out of this fund unless we get to the end and are over budget and can transfer those out but i i don't think we can have it both ways i'm i'm having i'm still having a hard time following your logic okay. it seems like you want to have it both ways no. to not spend it or to spend it out of the stormwater funds but leave it in here and i don't to me that does not make sense to handle our accounting that way yeah, so what we could do is um, the total at the bottom, not yet spent, the 630000 We could uh, take the 225000 out and move it down to the bottom and say um, funded by other sources, which would be the stormwater bond. So you can see the total project costs, but yet it's not affecting our police and fire bond monies, <coughs> if that would make more sense. So, so I would like to know what, the stormwater improvements are that cost two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Please, Justin. <laughs> Justin Nickel, Public Works Director. The two hundred twenty-five was simply an estimate on what stormwater improvements would cost. <clears throat> are they intending along that High that Street. I know are those yes. Yes, for High Street. But again, like we've talked about with several engineering things tonight, a concept. No pipe. No linear feet estimated. Um, so the 225 was a guesstimate, estimate on what stormwater improvements on High Street, in the pond north of High Street and through the levee would cost. And, and when are those improvements scheduled to be made? Because um, apparently we don't have the engineering design done or anything like yeah, that. We don't. Bolton and Mink is working on it currently. Okay. Uh, we would intend that we would let a project this fall okay. for the stormwater improvements. I should mention that those stormwater improvements encompass more than simply the improvements at the levee in the pond and at high street right so it seems more we whatever is associated see i don't th 
think necessarily that we would have dived into the stormwater improvement project if we weren't doing this police and fire building right now. I think we would have probably put it off a while because it is a big project. And so I think whatever costs are associated with High Street directly should be paid. I, I, I think if you would have asked me yesterday or a year ago, if, if I thought we would pay for some stormwater related things along High Street because it flooded there out of the police and fire budget, I would have said yes. That's where the money's gonna come from from that. So I, I'm not sure I want to take it out of the stormwater fund. My other comment would be is I'm not real familiar with the stormwater fund and <laughs> what it holds, and is it just sitting over there holding a lot of money for us to pull out of? No, to answer that question, I believe it was in 2015 or 2016, <clears throat> we bonded funds for stormwater improvements, Councilor Cahill. Um, one of those intended improvements was on our levee system. We've been mired with um, review and going round and round with the Army Corps of Engineers and with mm -hmm. FEMA. We haven't been able to spend those funds as I anticipated we would. Uh, the funding, um, the, the legal of the, the uh, obligating funds is that you must spend those within a certain amount of time. I'm telling this council I don't believe that we'll be able to spend those funds on the levy improvements within that certain amount of time. So I offered up that uh, those funds would be available for use on stormwater improvements here at uh, High Street. <coughs> and then at, we've had discussions on Continuing those improvements to the south on to Ingledew Street, I believe. Mm -hmm. So if we do not spend those funds on um, the high street improvements or the 225000 you have here, they'll be lost and we will not be able to benefit from them. I'm not an accountant, so I don't know for exactly sure how that works. But uh, that's we use the, it or the lose general it. intent, exactly. Is use you, it or lose it. You said it. you were going to borrow this money mm -hmm. to spend on improvements. You need to spend it within a certain amount of time. I remember that now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The money will still be there. We don't, we don't lose it. Um, no, no but there's it, of the total bond, you have to spend certain percentages before you have to then um, start doing arbitrage calculations and other things, I believe. And I think, Diana, if, if you can provide any clarity to that. <laughs> nice. There's there's penalty for for not spending them within a certain amount of time. Right. So there's a penalty if you make too much interest too. Well, <laughs> actually, you know, if if you're making too much interest, that's a good thing. Yeah. Y it's better to make the you know make the best interest that you can and pay some back rather than undershoot. So, um, yeah, I don't have a lot to add. Uh, so, I don't know. We need to, usually it's 18 months is the percentage that you need to spend most of it by. So. so, can I ask, is it from strictly the financial point of view, is it to our advantage to spend this stormwater improvement from the stormwater bonds fund at this time rather than from the fire and police station? We still have time to make that decision. Um, you know, when Justin gets the bids in this fall, you can make it make that decision at that point. But he needs to have an idea of where else he's going to spend it if he's not going to spend it out of the stormwater bond. <laughs> so I guess question to Justin: Are there any other projects then that the stormwater fund would be used for other than this current project that's been evaluated? Yes, I should clarify that uh, I believe that was, don't hold me to, I believe that was a $3 million bond issuance. Mm -hmm. We spent roughly a million dollars of that on the second and Ingledew stormwater improvements that were made in the summer of 2016. Hmm. So it, it's not as though we bonded all this money and it's all still sitting there. We've spent some portion of it, roughly a third or maybe a third to 50%. Um, we, we don't have anything imminent as such as this and I would offer again we're kind of we're arguing about the accounting of this of we could once again draw a line in the sand maybe at the south right away of, of High Street and say the 225,000 that we originally we originally estimated 
was spent for the improvements from High Street north to the levee, and the stormwater bonds are spent from High Street south to the end of our project. I think that could solve our solution or solve our problem if that's how we wanted to look at things. No, to answer your question, no, we don't have anything else imminent. Sorry for the long-winded answer. So, um, I think it all makes sense to me now. So the motion is to plan to pay the, the approximately two hundred twenty-five thousand. That gives you direction. You direction. To pay it out of the stormwater fund yes correct yes but then we have it on here so that we have it as an estimate so that we know yes actually stormwater improvements were made to the tune of two hundred twenty five thousand yes. dollars and we don't Council spend it answer, but yes. and we don't spend it on something else that's right got it i get it okay. thank Clear you much. <laughs> your honor has the motion been seconded yes I don't remember. It was too long ago. It was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yes. Does anyone else want to beat the dead horse? <laughs> <laughs> I just, <clears throat> can I add one more thing? Oh, why uh, not? Since, since you're no? new, this, this whole $3 million bond got started because the, the Corps of Engineers and who's the other one? Federal Emergency Management, FEMA. Yeah. FEMA got in an argument. They wanted us to raise some of the existing dike. And some of the raises were like an inch. Anyway, it was estimated over a million bucks would be spent to readjust the top of that dike. <laughs> and, you know, it depends on where you put your survey st stick, whether you're an inch over or an inch under. That's when we let that bond issue, and the first time was to spend that million dollars there and then have the rest of it for somewhere else. So that's, <clears throat> that's why it goes back so far. Thank you. It's a convoluted topic for another day. Because we still, the FEMA and the Corps are still requiring <coughs> those things mm -hmm. when we can come to an agreement. But they can't agree on the number. Let's call the roll. Lamer? Yes. Martin? Yes. Weirin? Yes. Cahill? Yes. Gowdy? Yes. Hoop? Yes. Isom? Yes. Good. Carried. On to item K, which is public comment. Actually, Your Honor, if I may. You may. There was a second part of this, and I can be as brief or as fast. Jessica, if you'll go to the Multi Vista tab. I wanted to share with the council that uh, we do have this uh, service that takes pictures and uh, does an excellent job, in my opinion, of, uh, of our construction progress. And I just started the slideshow, and I'll let it play for a few seconds. be more than happy to share the link with anyone uh, so that you can go and look. It has a webcam so that any time, if you wanted to see what was, uh, what was happening at the site right this very minute, you could go to that linked uh, link. I sent it out a long time ago. It's probably been buried in people's inboxes. Should you desire to look at it again, let me know, and I will resend the link. Um, the pictures are not a public, uh, I think I'd be more than happy to share them with anybody that made a request, but I think in the best interest of our building, I don't want to put it out there for <coughs> all three billion people that live on this planet to look at. I think we'd be more than happy to share pictures and any progress, but uh, it is not, these slideshows and these individual static pictures are not a link that I have put out to the public. By all means, if uh, you don't share my assessment, uh, we can make a change to that. But just wanted to share you what it, uh, you'll see down in the bottom right that it goes along with the plans and it tells you where that picture is <coughs> taken. I think this is going to be invaluable for both departments and our maintenance department once we, uh, once we open this facility. Uh, if we have any dis contract disputes with anyone uh, about you know, documentation of what's been built, what time it was built, what day it was built, um, I saw this as an invaluable tool last year, and, and the further we get along, I see it as an invaluable tool going forward. Any questions I can answer? So the bottom floor is purple and the top floor is pink? <laughs> Uh, that's the installation of the insulation. I know. Uh, installation of the insulation? Yeah, I said oh. that correctly. You're out of order again. <laughs> I just wanted to add a couple more comments to the financial, if okay. Jessica can bring it back up. 
So the bottom three numbers, the computer software, that's under $20,000 in payments, and then the last two items, the buildings and improvements for Midwest storage and the <coughs> furniture and fixtures, those three numbers together all equal 750000 That's just what we're estimating. So that 523000 hasn't been encumbered with anybody in particular. That's just our estimate. So I just wanted to clarify that. Good. Thank you. Now let's go on to public comment. Just a quick public comment. Linda Clark is my name. I live at 306 South 2nd Avenue. And I perfectly understood what Council Member Lamer was getting to about the costs that are incurring for the police and fire department so that we would see indeed when it's finished, and it will be finished, I heard Justin say if. Well, anyway, it will be finished. I want to know how close it came in because this council will recall a number of the members. I stood up here and said I voted no, but it passed anyway. And I too would like to have it be detailed down so that we know exactly how close it came in to what was speculated. This meeting this evening, I heard it say about the antennas and having an increase on the antennas, and I heard a large number there. But I too, like Mr. Lamer, I want to see exactly the costs of what it's come into, because this will be on my property taxes for a long time. Thank you so much for all your time. Thank you. Any other public comment? Seeing no one else rising, let's uh, declare the meeting is adjourned at 6.42 p.m. <laughs>